a little while back we discussed an Ubuntu experiment with raising the CPU baseline. This would be going from x86-64 v1 up to potentially v3. Now this would cut out a lot of the early x86-64 hardware, but this is very much experimental just to see what sort of hardware is going to be lost, what the benefit is really going to be like, and whether it's really worth doing whatsoever. But a similar but markedly different approach was also suggested over on the Fedora side. That being optimized binaries, the AMD64 architecture. Now with every single one of these Fedora proposals, this is not guaranteed to happen. This is just putting it out there to get feedback and sort of discuss whether this is even a good idea in the first place. And considering when this one was released, the cutoff date, uh, it likely won't be brought in with Fedora 40 if it ever does happen. Now, the Ubuntu experiment was simply raise the baseline and just wing it, basically. Anything that does not meet the baseline is simply not going to work anymore. In the Fedora proposal, that is not what is being suggested, and actually explicitly discusses this problem. Fedora binaries for the AMD64 slash x86-64 architecture are compiled with cogeneration flags that support almost all CPU variants, but newer generations of processors gained additional instructions that may be used to generate faster code. A vendor-independent x86-64 PSEBI supplement defines four microarchitecture levels. V1, the baseline which is what their code targets, V2 plus SSE3 is what CentOS targets, V3 plus AVX, and then V4 plus AVX 512. And this is the prior Ubuntu post which includes a more comprehensive list of the features available in each level. If you'd like to go and read this for yourself, I'll leave it linked in the description down below. But a more important thing to know is the general CPUs that fit into each level. Now this is a very difficult question to answer, but as a general rule, for V2, it is Intel Nahalem and Jaguar on the AMD side and above. On V3, it is Haswell on the Intel side and Excavator on the AMD side. And then V4 is Skylake on the Intel side and Zen 4 on the AMD side. Except when it's not. So there is a lot of things like the Atom style chips, which even released today, are still in the V2 and V3 categories. And then random things are not in V4 that should be in V4, judging by when they were released. It's kind of a giant mess. But we can generally safely say that all CPUs available now are at least V2. V3 for the most part, but there are some weird exceptions. V4, don't even try to touch that. Now, when code is compiled for a higher microarchitecture level than is supported by the CPU, it will crash, with SIGIL a legal instruction on CPUs which do not support it. Benchmark results show small differences in performance, usually in the range from minus 5% to plus 10%. Yes, you might actually see a performance reduction with no discernible difference for most code, but some applications do benefit with gains of upwards of 120% in the same benchmarks. That seems mostly in line with what we saw in the Ubuntu experiment as well. In some cases, you're seeing very small performance reductions. In this one, we see a very small performance increase. Sometimes it's a little bit bigger, like this one here. 84% increase, 142% increase. In cases like this, it does make sense to use the optimizations. But when some things just are not affected or are slightly worse, it doesn't make sense to do it to everything. After this came out, Pharonix did their own benchmarking as well and found fairly similar numbers. It's a couple of percent difference. In some cases, you get something quite a bit bigger. But for the most part, it just doesn't really make sense to do it to every single thing. However, 
over the years, various people have expressed interest in raising the required microarchitecture levels, but we have been very conservative in making changes because support is missing in many older CPUs that are still in use, and in fact, even in some CPUs produced and sold today. This might be the only thing where Fedora is being conservative. They adopted System D first. They were one of the first distros to adopt Pipewire and Wayland and all of these other things. But in this one area, this one area, they're going to be conservative. And I guess it makes sense because actual hardware will stop working if they do this. By raising the required level, we would make Fedora completely unusable on many machines. It also seems that recompiling all packages with the change options would be largely a waste of resources because for most code, it makes no difference. But for some of the numerical or cryptographic code, there are noticeable gains and it seems to be worth the effort to provide optimized code. This also makes Fedora more attractive to people interested in optimization. So I already mentioned the low-powered Atom chips that are still being put into new products today that are only in the V2 class. But there is also a lot of users who make use of older hardware as well. You've probably heard people mention that they use a Haswell CPU, but there's also people that are using Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge. Now, Haswell is part of the V3 category. It's the first generation in V3, so anything earlier than that would just stop working. Now, at some point, it does make sense to drop support for these Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge era CPUs, like it made sense to drop support for the 8386D6 all the way back in 2012. Nobody in 2012 was running a modern kernel on an 8386. And at some point, nobody's going to be running a modern kernel on a Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge CPU. Right now they do, so maybe give it like five or 10 more years and then make that decision. But there's already a partial solution in place to dynamically load the optimizations for your CPU. The dynamic linker already has the glibc HW caps mechanism to load optimized implementations of shared objects. This means the packages can provide optimized libraries and the linker will automatically load them from separate directories if appropriate. For AMD64, that is this location right here. So this functionality was added back in the 2.33 release in 2021. If we search for HW caps, this right here, the dynamic linker loads optimized implementations of shared objects from subdirectories under the glibc hwcaps directory on the library search path if the system's capabilities meet the requirements for that subdirectory. So if your CPU supports v3, it'll load the v3 optimizations. If it supports v4, it'll load the v4 optimizations if they are available. Otherwise, it'll fall back to whatever the newest option available is. Initially, supported subdirectories include all of these right here, and in the x86-64 Linux GNU case, the subdirectory names correspond to the vendor-independent x86-64 microarchitecture levels defined in the x86-64 PSABI supplement, that being v1, v2, v3, and v4. Now, I said this was a partial solution. This solution only deals with the shared objects, the libraries. It doesn't deal with all of the other applications on your system. However, there is a solution for that. To extend the glibc hwcaps mechanism to executables, systemd will be modified to extend the search path with appropriate directories. When started, it will check the CPU capabilities and modify the executable search path it has internally, which is also used to set path for services. For AMD64, once again, it will check this right here. So basically, as you boot your system, it will look at your CPU and say, okay, hmm, what can this thing run? If it's some weird Atom system, okay, V2 looks like it's going to be safe. If it's a modern Zen 4 system, okay, let's go with V4 then. If it's something in between, maybe let's run the V3 optimizations. And that's only if those optimizations exist. If it doesn't, then it'll just go back to the baseline that Fedora is using, which is the x86-64 baseline. This, I feel, is a much, much better solution. 
if you were to hard optimize everything for v4, for example, or just even have some packages hard optimized to v4, and then you take your Zen 4 CPU out because you need to do some hardware testing, you're doing benchmarking, something like that, and then you stick in, I don't know, an old Ivy Bridge CPU or whatever you want to stick into the system, that software just isn't going to run anymore. But if you dynamically check what the CPU can support, well, if you suddenly can't support it, it will just fall back to the thing that it knows works. Glibsy HW caps together with the new feature in System D provide a generic mechanism. It will be up to individual packages to provide code which makes use of it. Individual package maintainers are encouraged to benchmark their packages after recompilation and provide the optimized variants if useful i.e. the code in question is measurably faster and the program is ran often enough for this to actually make a difference. If there is a 1% improvement and the application is run once a year, maybe it doesn't really matter that much. But if it's a 20% improvement and it's run five times a day, okay, that might make sense then. So unlike Ubuntu, if there is no optimization, if it makes the application slower, don't just blindly include the optimization because you want to include the optimization. In that case, there's no point including it. Available benchmark results are narrow and not very convincing. We should plan an evaluation of results after one release. If it turns out the real gains are too small, we can scrap the effort. On the other hand, we should also consider other architectures, for example, microarchitecture level Z14 and 15 for the S390X or Power9 and 10 for PPC64LE. Other architectures are not included in this change proposal to reduce its scope. So then, the benefit to Fedora. The developers who are interested in this kind of optimization work can perform it within Fedora. That's a pretty good benefit, without having to build separate repositories. If you wanted to do it now, you need to use things like copper, and it's just kind of a big mess. The users who have the appropriate hardware will gain performance benefits. Faster code is also more energy efficient, the change will be automatic and transparent to users. So if you don't use the optimizations, you just won't notice it. And if you do use the optimizations, you just won't notice it, unless you notice things going a tiny bit faster. Now unlike Ubuntu doing an experiment, RHEL actually did raise the baseline. They are currently on v2, with plans to raise it up to v3. This means that older hardware simply does not work on RHEL anymore. And some other distros like OpenSUSE and Ubuntu with its experiment do provide a optimized version of the distro that's separate from the main one. Now the author does say there should be no impact for users. If the optimized code is available and installed for their hardware, various tasks may finish faster and use less energy. Now, I would disagree that there is no impact on the users. There is going to be a slight storage impact. If you have the baseline and then V3 installed, for example, that's two things installed. So there is going to be more storage used. Is that going to be a massive issue? Probably not because most things aren't going to be using it. But if you have a bunch of things that use it, maybe then there's going to be at least some level of storage overhead that is worth noting. Now, as with every Fedora proposal, there's also a discussion thread. Now, considering this came out over the holiday period, it hasn't had a ton of discussion. It's still getting a bit today, but there's only 21 comments available right now. There was a bit of criticism from Neil over not consistently using the terms AMD64 and x86-64. Minor criticism doesn't really affect the overall proposal. One user who wanted the approach to be more like the way Plan 9 works, there's always one of them, and one user who didn't read the proposal. Whilst they've been fairly slow to make any changes with the CPU baseline, Fedora is often at the forefront of really weird changes being done. Whilst this one is just a proposal, and there hasn't been any serious discussion about actually pursuing it, I wouldn't be surprised if going down the line, something like this is discussed, and if it is properly discussed, maybe you'll start seeing other distros trying it out as well. This, I feel, would allow for a much more gradual adoption 
of these newer CPU baselines, rather than doing everything all at once, use it on packages where it makes sense to do so, without also cutting out those early CPUs that are still actively in use. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's about time to raise the CPU baseline? Do you like the idea of doing it in a more dynamic way where older CPUs are still going to be supported? What do you think? Let me know down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrub, Silly Bureau Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And let me know what CPU you're running.